uh, in the UK. Jet airliner crashed into one of the twin towers of the World Trade Center. 18 minutes later, another airline crashed into the other tower. At 14.43, reports emerged that a plane's crashed near the Pentagon in Washington. It crashed into the Pentagon, and the fires are still burning there. Uh, it's about five past three, the south tower of the World Trade Center collapsed, and 20 minutes later, the north tower of the World Trade Center collapsed. You've heard all the, the terrible news unfolding throughout the day here on TalkSport. Let's hear now from another eyewitness who was in the World Trade Center when the planes crashed. We were able to finally head down, but then there were other doors that were locked, so we were brought into another floor when there was another explosion, and they finally let us continue to go down. And your clothes are in shreds, and you still got debris in your hair. Is that what happened to your colleagues, and, and how were they? Um, I, I have a rim, which that's how we've been able to keep contact with one another, and I had my uh, one of my co male co-workers contact me when I was in the hospital and asked me and told me that he's with the entire team, where am I? And I told him I was at the hospital, so everybody is doing okay. How are people feeling? And could you see anything? Was there smoke all around you? Well, when we got down to the bottom floor, um, it was, we would thought we were okay. And then there was a collapse. We don't know what collapsed. There was a collapse of something. The police and fire department told us to go run to the wall and don't look outside. Next thing we know, a billowing black smoke just came in. And I mean, it went down my mouth, up my nose, all over the place, and people were hysterical at that time. You couldn't see anybody, you could barely see the lights of the flashlights that were downstairs. But eventually, they I think they broke a plate glass window to Borders. They were breaking glass to try to get out to, try to, get out to Borders Bookstore, and they, we went through down their escalator and then up another escalator to come out, and that's how we finally got out of the... Um, out of the office. Eyewitness reports from the US and today's terrible tragedy. This is TalkSport. We're joined now by Ahmed Arami, the founder of Radio Islam and a writer and, journal and journalist as well. Uh, Ahmed, thanks very much for, for joining us. Now, you're obviously sympathetic to the Palestinian cause, but can we just start by saying that, well, I'll ask you, uh, do you share with us in, in condemnation of uh, the acts that we've seen today? Uh, Excuse, first excuse my French. My French, is, my English is very bad because I speak especially French. Mm -hmm. But of course, not just as Muslim, but first of all as human being, I condemn this barbaric uh, terror act. And I think uh, the Palestine people is every day victim of uh, acts, c criminal acts like this. The Sharon is bombing every day. Uh, the Palestine House, the Palestine cities, Palestine uh, public administration buildings. And I think this act, barbarous act now in New York, in Washington, the United States, can be just a product of uh, the criminal ideology uh, like Sharon criminal ideology and Milosevic ideology, I mean the Serb racist ideology. And I think it can we can see because now the FBA and the CIA will start the, their investigation, but uh, only uh, this barbaric act. It's just in the. It's not in the Palestine interest uh, because our war, our resistance war, is against the Jewish occupation in Palestine, not against the democratic United States country. The the uh, American people is our friend. Uh, the, the democratic, civilized country. We have not any conflict with the United States. Of course, the government of the United States are supporting uh, Israel against the United States' interests. It means uh, uh, maybe uh, the government of the United States is directly or indirectly responsible what has happened there. And, but I think the Jewish lobby in the United States, or the Jewish uh, ideology, racist ideology, want to make the, the sect uh, as reason to put the United States in the uh, occupation side, absolutely, definitively. It means that Israel wants 
make a provocation uh, against the United States and uh, tell to the United States people with, with the Jewish media that... The, oh, the, oh, that Ahmed, sorry, let, let me just interrupt you there for a moment. Do you fear now a backlash? Do you think the Americans may now strike back against pockets of Palestinians? I don't think that uh, they will do that now. I think the president of the United States must want a white the investigation because they can't, uh, th this is a very big operation. I don't think that Palestine or Bin Laden can uh, have ability to do like this action. I think the, the, this actions must be uh, directly or indirectly from the Israel side and I think if the United States, States must do something now is to revitalize the uh, foreign policy of the United States and uh, to stop to support to back the Jewish occupation in Palestine because this Jewish occupation in Palestine uh, during all this last 50 years are the uh, source of all our modern tra 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 strategy in the world. And I think the United States' interest is not to make war against Muslims or against Palestine. No, I don't, I don't think uh, they want to do that, Ahmed. They want to find out who's responsible for this. Israel, just to balance up your argument, it's a self-determined state, it is a democracy in the Middle East. Some would say that they're a democracy surrounded by dictatorships. I hope that the United States uh, will understand what you, uh, I agree with you 100%. I think that we need a democracy. We have right to democracy, to the human rights in our country, exactly for, uh, like for the, uh, the people in the United States. And I hope that we will have more peace, not more war. We okay, have, Ahmed. Okay. Yes. I think, I, think we, I think we all hope for that, Ahmed. Thank you very much indeed for giving us your interpretation of the ghastly events in New York and Washington uh, today. Well, Mike, Thank you very much. I can tell you that the, the lack of blood now in Washington and New York City has become critical according to the emergency services there. The flags are flying at half-mast around the Pentagon, the home of the U.S. military, of course. That was bombed earlier today. And, uh, well, by a rogue plane, one of four that have so far crashed in various places in the United States. Two at the World Trade Center, the Twin Towers in New York, and uh, one with uh, a less loss of life at uh, Pittsburgh as well. Well, we can uh, cross back to Washington. Admiral Craig Quigley from the Pentagon uh, just bringing us up to date with the details of the st state of emergency there. Defense can impose around the world, but uh, they are imposed on a local basis because what may be true here in Washington could be very different in San Diego or, or some other location. Here in Washington, D.C., we are at threat condition Delta. That is the highest condition that we can go to. That is the absolutely appropriate thing to do given the events of this morning. What, what seems to have happened is that we had an aircraft intentionally fly into the Pentagon. Uh, for those of you with cameras, you can see the spot behind me. Uh, there were intense fires following the aircraft's impact into the building. Arlington Search and Rescue personnel are just now, and it's about uh, almost 2 o'clock, just now gaining access to portions of the building where the plane hit because the fires were too intense. Um, the fires are still burning in the Pentagon, at least in that vicinity. Um, we have a variety, too many to even mention, of local um, first responders, fire departments, uh, police departments, you name it, that have rushed to the aid of, of the Pentagon here and the people. Each of the military departments is working to set up an 800 toll-free number where family members can call to find out the status of their loved ones. As soon as we have those phone numbers, we will give them to you. I would ask for your help, please, in getting those numbers out as far and wide and quickly as possible so that we can alleviate some of the concern for individuals who have loved ones that work in the Pentagon. 
Um, I don't have enough feel for the extent of damage to the building, but it was is significant. And again, fires are still burning, at least in several places in the building. Um, that's about what I know. I'll try to answer some of your questions, but you're going to have a lot more questions than I have. Did the Can we ask you about the, the individual right here? Explain what happened. The, the size of the Pentagon building, many in the building felt uh, a thud and heard kind of a muffled explosion. And it was um, at, at that point, uh, the Defense Protective Service, the fire department, uh, others uh, uh, took off in and for action to the impact point in the building. Um, the building was very quickly evacuated. Uh, people were, were sent as far away from the building as possible. Uh, many, many people were sent home. Uh, and again, with, with a request, please call your loved ones right away to let them know you're okay. Uh, people uh, were, again, sent as far away from the building as possible. We didn't know what might happen next, and the fire was burning very fiercely at that point in time. Was there what, what Go ahead. No, I, I sense no panic. I, people were moving very quickly for the exits to the building, but it was all very controlled. That was Admiral Craig Quigley from the Pentagon speaking on Talk Sports. Earlier, President George W. Bush vowed to hunt down those responsible. Freedom itself was attacked this morning by a faceless coward. Earth. And freedom will be defended. Earth. I want to reassure the American people that full, the full resources of the federal government are working to assist local authorities to save lives, and to help the victims of these attacks. Make no mistake, the United States will hunt down and punish those responsible for these cowardly acts. I've been in regular contact with the Vice President, Secretary of Defense, the National Security Team, and my Cabinet. We have taken all appropriate, appropriate security precautions to protect the American people. Our military at home and around the world is on high alert status. And we have taken the necessary security precautions to continue the functions of your government. We have been in touch with the leaders of Congress and with world leaders to assure them that we will do what is, whatever is necessary to protect America and Americans. I ask the American people to join me in saying a thanks for all the folks who have been fighting hard to rescue our fellow citizens and to join me in saying a prayer for the victims and their families. It's George W. Bush, the President of the United States of America. It's a difficult balance to strike. They have to come down hard on the perpetrators of these uh, terrible acts. But as uh, Ahmed Rami was saying to us a short while ago, Mike, what we can't do and what the, the Western world mustn't do is turn this into a war against the, the Arab world as a whole because a, a tiny minority of these people are responsible for these horrific acts and they will be condemned by uh, most of the Muslim world and it's very, very important that the West uh, maintains its allies. Well, I mean, if ever it was cometh the moment, cometh the man, this is a test now for the relatively new President of the United States, George W. Bush. Personally, I'm rather glad that his father's still around because his father, George Bush Sr., fought the last successful military campaign for the United States of America, because remember, John, that the President of the United States of America is also the Commander-in-Chief of the Armed Forces. He has the ultimate and absolute say on when to activate the Armed Forces. George W. Bush led those forces into the Gulf War. It was a very successful campaign for America. Uh, there's always been a debate about where that ended and should they have gone on and taken Saddam Hussein out of it. But th that's irrelevant to the fact that it was a very successful campaign. What George W. Bush, the present incumbent of the White House, of the Oval Office, has to decide is the measure of retaliation and